Hello, Brian. Hi, Haley. You're well today? I am well today. It's a big day. Um, yeah. We have Tell Thanksgiving me. in a week, and we also have a huge eclipse and a full moon um, tonight. Tonight. And what will that mean? Well, <clears throat> um, it is a lunar eclipse tonight. It's almost a full eclipse. So if you're on the East Coast, you will be able to see it from about I believe 1 a.m. until about 4 a.m. Um, if you want to get out of bed. Um, but it's supposed to be the longest eclipse, definitely of this century. I've heard different things of like the last 650 years, the longest eclipse since the 15th century. So regardless wow. of what time period we're looking at, it's a um, it's a big eclipse, big eclipse. So wow. um, there's a lot of energy around it and um so far a lot of that energy is coming out of people's livers <laughs> livers yeah what's how is that related tell me it the way that i see it is that the livers are the livers carry most of the our emotion and a lot of the more heavier emotions the anger the grief the sadness sort of gets held in our livers so this sort of full moon and the eclipse is really um, pushing the liver to almost like push all of that out and almost like oh. a massive liver detox. So um, it, will, it seems to be coming out not only in people not feeling great, but also in sort of what we would call irrational emotions. To me, I think they're very healthy and better out than in, um, but it is going to feel irrational. Oh. Huh. I'm not sure I'm going to get up in the middle of the night to see it. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So, so we're a week away from Thanksgiving. And it's and, Thanksgiving in a week, indeed. And we're going to skip our conversation, which I'll miss next Thursday. Um, but when I give Thanksgiving at the table, uh, you will be one of the reasons uh, that I give thanks. I love our relationship. I love this time with you. Uh, I love our conversations, um, but uh, you grew up in Zimbabwe. They didn't have a Thanksgiving. No, what and, uh, holiday was Christmas. Big uh, Christmas. Uh, so, uh, Haley, what do you give thanks for? My life. Every mm -hmm. day, I give thanks that I wake up and see the sun, and I hear the birds, and I give light. Just thanks for life and everything that it that encompasses you know it's the oxygen it's the food it's the water it's my shelter it's my work it's my clients it's my friends it's my experiences it's hard to just say that there's one thing so with the one thing is life the beating life yeah how about you what do you give thanks for and this is a big thanksgiving for you it is it's the first thanksgiving that i um, I won't be asked by my sister to send the recipe for turkey gravy. Uh, I give thanks for her mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, who she's been in my life. You know, I can't speak for everyone else. I, they all have their own stories. And, yeah. but, um, as I said last week, pretty terrific big sister. Uh, I give thanks for all the people in my life who've influenced me in a positive way of who've helped create who I am. Uh, my sister was one, but there are many others, uh, including people who uh, wrote a script for a book or wrote the words, the lyrics to a particular song. Uh, I give thanks for all of that influence. Um, interestingly, Haley, a, a, a good friend wrote to me today. Uh, his mother has died and his mother never really accepted his homosexuality uh, and he, he uh, asked whether or not I ever regretted being gay and because he is going to speak at his mom's memorial and mm -hmm. and you know wanted to be able to talk about their estrangement over the issue which I discouraged uh, but uh, I said, no, I've never, ever, you know, it, it, you know, when I was younger, I sort of 
was nervous, scared of my feelings, but especially since coming out, I've never regretted it. In fact, I celebrate it. It's part mm -hmm. of, I mean, it's really, I'm so, I'm glad that I was born gay. You know, not that I have anything wrong, you know, against straight people. Some of my best friends are straight. <laughs> but I love being who I am. I love the fact that uh, my life has been filled with the colors and flavors that it has. Uh, I think, we, you know, in large part because of my sexual orientation. Do you give thanks for yourself or do you usually focus your thanksgiving on other people? Um, I, I, you're, that's a really great question. I, I give thanks uh, for other people, um, uh, for Ray, you know, for the dog, for my friends, for my family, uh, for people who do good uh, and suffer the consequences of doing good. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, but I was at a, uh, a spiritual talk uh, a couple of days ago by August Gold, whose name you know, and yeah. I brought it up several times. We're going to get together for coffee next week. Uh, she found a new translation of the Tao that she loves, and she just loves the fact that Ray and I read a passage of the Tao every morning out loud uh, because she thinks it's, you know, the end all book. She raised Jewish, um, you know, and her father wanted her to be a rabbi, but. <laughs> She wasn't an Old Testament Jew. She, <laughs> she, she really did not embrace an eye for an eye. But she was talking about blessing others. And, uh, and that when we bless others, uh, we have to bless ourselves in the process. Absolutely. So you know, part of blessing others is having the feelings come up in ourselves. And that um, so we bless ourselves as we bless others. Uh, and so um, I'm glad, Haley, that I've had the impact I have on some people's lives. Uh, you know, I keep getting reminders of that in email posts. A lot of people are responding to my post about my new book on being gay and gray and saying, oh, my God, your book on being gay saved my life. I'm grateful for that. I don't take credit for it in my own mind. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like, wow, look what you did. I sort of feel like, wow, was I lucky, you know, to be in a place at a time in which things that I wrote got put together, got distributed, got put in people's hands. They read it and it made a difference. And as you and I have spoken in the past, I, I really do believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, I know some people are so turned off by religious talk and it's not, for me, it's not religious, it's spiritual. Yeah. Uh, but I believe uh, some people call it my muse. You know, I would talk about the inspiration of the spirit in, in writing. So going back to your original question, I would give thanks. You know, I should give thanks for myself. You know, I know I, you know, I need to focus on that, but I give sure, I sure give thanks to the spirit Mm. Um, for working through me and you know obviously um, all others but the only one I'm familiar with as it works is me and I think you know being able to recognize that we are the Holy Spirit and whatever name you give that we are the Holy Spirit and everything that is around you doesn't happen without you mm -hmm. you're the one consistent constant in that thanksgiving yeah Haley. uh another thing that august did and i know she was quoting another uh, writer but she um urged us to throughout the day have the meditation i'm just here i'm just here mm -hmm. meaning quit thinking about you know the pot roast quit thinking about the shopping trip at this moment i'm just here what are you smelling what are you feeling? What are you, you know? Using your five senses. I'm, I'm right here. I'm just here. I don't have to solve the problem of inflation. No. I, you know, I don't, I don't have to. Uh, all I need to do is be present. And that's enough. 
because that's the only place that, that's the only reality is the moment and that's all we're, you know, honestly, that is the gift. And that's all we're asked. If we talk about the Holy Spirit, that's all we're asked to do is just to embody the Holy Spirit now. Mm -hmm. And then now, and then now, and then now. And it's, I encourage all of my clients to really start practicing with their five senses again, really engaging. Like when you think about what do I smell right now? What do I hear right now? What do I see right now? Where am I physically? What am I feeling? Because I think, you know, our five senses are that very physical connection with the Holy Spirit. We like, we're humans. We like things to be manifested in the physical. And our five senses are that link between the non-physical and the physical. Say that last part again. Our five senses, sometimes six, are that link between the physical and the non-physical. Mm -hmm. And we just need to be here now to be able to like connect into the yes. link. Yeah. I've been very focused on letting go of the ropes. And that is part of being present just here now. Like we don't have to solve anything. We don't have to try and figure out who needs to be where, how I need to do blah, 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 blah. It's just let go of the ropes, be here now. Just be fully present and breathe in your divinity. Mm -hmm. And to just keep practicing that every, every, every moment. Um, it's a... It's so important, and I very much share her enthusiasm for being able to spread that message about, you know, not digging our heads in the sand, not being ignorant that there's not a lot going on. It's being fully aware of how much is going on and being able to say this is the best way to navigate it. Can you talk more about um, uh, blessing yourself or being thankful for yourself? I'd love to. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> good. good. Um, not from a, you know, and one of the things, one of the words that I'm truly, have been truly loving is narcissism. Um, because we're in an age where narcissist has such an awful, awful ring to it. But then there's another side of narcissism, which is sort of starting to embrace the blessing that you are and being able to say, I'm proud I'm gay. I don't regret it. I'm proud I'm straight. I don't regret it. I'm proud I made these decisions. I don't regret it. That's also a level of narcissism. Hmm. You know, when we start to look, be present, and we use our five senses, that is the blessing. Not only is it a blessing from outside, but it's a blessing from within too. And I, the way that I view life and the way that I try and participate in life is that it's all from me. It is my perception. It is how the Holy Spirit is radiating and amplifying out of me. So I am the blessing. I am the miracle. It doesn't mean I'm the only blessing or the only miracle. When I see you, I think you have just as much divine right to be able to say, I am the blessing. I am the miracle. So when we, when we talk about the blessings and the blessing of thanksgiving, for me, I think it's a little bit of that switch in terms of being able to take a moment and to look around and to say, wow, this is my doing. I showed up. I showed up for love. And look what I've created. You've created all these wonderful connections. Mm-hmm. You created the meal. You're the one working so hard to create this delicious meal for others to enjoy. And having a moment to really be thankful that you showed up to do that, I think is a moment of being divine and is a moment, of, is, it's a sacred moment with the divine. What do you put, you know, where's the limit on that? And where's the responsibility also? The limit on it, I think that if it's in love, there is no limit on it. 
I think if you start switching over to ego and looking for validation outside, mm -hmm. then I think you're reaching a limit where you could be going into over into out of balance. Um, you know, I think the more that we are, let me back up. Where I am today, I firmly believe that we cannot love another until we love ourselves, until we truly understand what it is to love ourselves by speaking kindly to ourselves, by not punishing ourselves, then we can truly love another. There will always be a separation between, you know, that's kindness over there, but when it comes to me, that's not kindness. So I think being able to focus on that thanksgiving of self allows us to really bring up the balance in terms of love and kindness and really allows us to radiate an authentic love out. What I about competition? myself when I am aware of how awful and violent I am being to myself with my words and my thoughts, mm -hmm. I question myself. Is that not being a contradiction? How can you love another when you can say such things and think such things about yourself? And do you do that? Oh, I, I'm, I'm right up there with having to practice and learn better skills around self-talk and, you know, being conscious of my thoughts and being able to pull myself back by being present. Like, hang on a minute, that's not really true. Let's be present. Let's see what's actually in front of us right now and come back to that place of embodying the Holy Spirit. I, what responsibility comes with self-love? <laughs> I have very high expectations of myself. The responsibility there is always being love. Trying my best being not to be the contradiction, always being love. Always uh -huh. trying to see people with love and kindness trying my best to stay away from punishment and attachment. I think that's the responsibility to just always see the divinity, the Holy Spirit in another, in other people. Mm -hmm. It's a big responsibility. And uh, challenging. Yeah. In a world where your value is uh, based upon your celebrity status, your power, uh, uh, how much money, mm -hmm. you know, the obituaries that are, the obituaries that are run in the papers or the, you know, pop up, it's about celebrities. And uh, it's not about the average person. So we, we live in a world in which we see that others, uh, get validated for particular reasons. And of course we wanna be validated. Of course we wanna feel like human community, our family, being the whole human race, uh, thinks that we bring value to the table. Uh, but uh, you, have to, you have to start with yourself and say, look, like I said to my friend, uh, your mother not accepting you as gay has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all about your mother. It's your mother, not you. You know, you're a shining light. You know, you're a gift. She missed it because of fear. Yeah, uh, and that's tragedy. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Terrible. You I know, mean, sadness. Talk about punishment. Yeah. She punished herself where she missed out on this enormously vibrant life. Yeah. Yeah. It, which is why I've heard, you've heard me say in the past that, you know, when parents tell me their child is gay, you know, I congratulate them because, oh my God, this is great. You have no idea, you know, how different your life is going to be. And when I say that to gay people, they nod and smile because <laughs> they know they've taken their mom or dad to a restaurant that folks never would have gone to or uh, introduced them to gay celebrities that they never would have met, right? Um, and, uh, you know, 
parents, I think, generally say, that's it's one of the best things that ever happened to me, is having a gay kid or a transgender child, you know. And I think, you know, it's, it's just really accept. you know, going back to your um, lesson with August Gold, it's being present and just accepting the beauty of the present moment. Being able to be at a table with somebody else and just seeing them for that vibrant light that they are. Mm -hmm. It takes enormous courage to be able to open up into that space on both sides. Um, but I think, you know, you and I can both agree and part of the reason for us talking every Thursday is because, yeah, it is hard. But my goodness, the beauty, the ease, the celebration, so worth it. Uh-huh. Yeah, life is hard. It can be. It can be really hard, you know, especially when you're, you know, people who've lost people that they love understand the depths of grief that are it's, possible. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I told August about Kathy's death and told her about my grief. And she said, and joy that you had her and love, you know, every, you know, the deeper your pain, the more awful the experience of grief, the greater the testimony of the love that yeah. you have for that person. But part of love, you know, part of it is that experience of feelings of grief. Uh, but uh, I have another subject I want to transition to if you have. Let's go. You have a subject that you. No, want. please carry on. Well, I mentioned it a second ago uh, when I said, you know, that parents of a gay child, you know, should be really excited. And, and I said, or a transgender child. And right now in the U.S., there's uh, a particular political party is um, organized around the issue of denying transgender children uh, the right to surgery, uh, the right to participate in sports as their true selves, or to use the appropriate uh, locker room, bathroom, etc. Let's uh, can we talk about absolutely as we as we love ourselves, loving ourselves as a child or an adult who feels a, a conflict between their identity and the gender they were assigned at birth, the sex they were assigned at birth. It's a boy, why? Because he has a penis. Well, does a penis make you a boy? I mean, is that it? Or is there more to it? And transgender people are telling us real clearly, hey, there's lots more to it. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, gender is between the ears. And so, especially at this time, with so many uh, transgender people being murdered, I mean, there's an epidemic of it. What's the threat? You know, if we love ourselves, how can we not look at somebody and love them enough to listen to them say, my joy and happiness is not expressing myself as you want me to. I think love is missing from that equation. Missing. Yeah, I, the way that I perceive it, the way that I see it is that a person that is in self-love, that is in love, and it takes on the responsibility of radiating and amplifying love in the Holy Spirit, cannot say to another person, you can't be that. So, you, you know, I, it, it's one, it's a very specific reason why I try and stay off media. I like to be aware of what's going on, but I just like to see sort of the trends. I don't like to go into the details because with that responsibility of, you know, trying to embody love and being love all the time, when you see that stuff, it can de derail you really quickly. And I think that's part of the responsibility, you know, it goes along with that. The harder you love something, the deeper the levels of 
depths of grief are. I feel like my responsibility when there are these, it just doesn't make any sense. Like I can't debate it because I have no words. You know, the only thing I can say is it doesn't make sense. I don't understand mm -hmm. why I do understand, but I, I can't fix it myself. I can just continue to say that I see you, I see you, I see you. When I look at the issue that we're facing, not only in that arena, but there are a lot of people that don't know love. Their definition of love is broken. And we're seeing that manifested in how we treat other people. It's not okay. It's not okay. And one can, I hope, and in my faith in the Holy Spirit and my faith in choosing to embody love and be love and be kind and to always try and see the divinity, the Holy Spirit in another person, regardless. I have faith that all of this is coming out now so that we can all, regardless of where we sit with on which side of the spectrum, we can all sit back and be like, whoa, how am I treating people? Am I, yeah. am I on yeah. the right side of history here? Right. And the, hard, the hardest part is how am I treating the people who are hurting the people I love? And I wanted to go into that because I think that's where we get, we can be so well and so present when we're looking outside and looking at all of these other things. But when it comes boom into your circumference and somebody says something to you or like it cuts deep, it is really, really hard to stay present. And to bless them. And to bless them and to not punish them, to not try and make a point. Mm -hmm. It becomes really, really hard. I find that is where some of us are right now, is being able to be, take a breath and be like, whoa, this is a slippery slope down. It's not where I want to go. I want to be back up here. I'm going to take a minute and get back up here. I may not be able to speak to you for a while <laughs> while I'm trying to get back up here, and I can find the appropriate words to communicate with you. Um, but I think that is the challenge for some of us right now is to really catch ourselves on the slide down. And before we make it worse, we're pulling ourselves out saying, I need to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. and, not punish you in the, and, not, and not punish you in the process. And not, pun like not contribute to all of that muck yeah. in the process. That's, one of that's the, hard. It's really hard. And I think one of the things that really made me want to throw my laptop was when I was seeing um, Eternals just came out and Angelina Jolie was at the premiere for the Eternals and she took her entire family and her daughter Shiloh was wearing a dress. This girl is 15 maybe and she used to dress like a boy and now she's dressing like a girl and that was the headline and I was just like this is a I don't even know if she's 15. Like, I think she's 14, 15. I'm just like, this is a young person. How dare we put that on the headlines? Yeah. How dare we make her mother's movie, which costs an enormous amount of money, which will hopefully other people entertain, and turn that into one young person's decision on what they wear. It becomes like a carnival sideshow. Yeah. That, just, uh, that the media says, look at this, look how awful, look how strange. You know, what, what, are, what do you, you should be upset about this, are you? Yeah, well, they're celebrating it that now she's wearing a dress, like finally. And I'm just like, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just, you know, I think, I, I hope where we're going that there will be far more compassion in terms of people being able to take a minute and be like, what if that was my kid? Or what if that was me? What if when I left my house in the morning, somebody eviscerated me because my pants were too long? 
or because I wore a different color skirt. Just a moment to be present and to really think about your impact on the world and what it feels like when it comes back into your circle and cuts deeply. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be the person cutting other people? And, and one of the things I want people who embrace themselves as they are to understand is that they're teachers. They are. We all have that, an impact. Mm -hmm. We're all teachers. And, you know, the wise get that. Sometimes it comes with age. Sometimes, you know, there's the children that are old souls that seem to just kind of know. Um, but I don't think it takes, it's not just the wise people that teach. Everybody is teaching. Everybody. And everyone's a student. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of what we're doing is you know, walking this path towards an end. We know there's an end. We see it. Uh, we're not quite sure what, what the end means, uh, but we're walking it and we look for signposts that help us. We look you know, at posts and everything means we're all interconnected. So everything means something and there can be a lot of signposts. My goodness. <laughs> you know, you, you asked me about self-love uh, a while ago. And as I reflect on it, that is what I communicated in the book that touched so many lives is that I loved myself. And so many uh, readers, gay readers at the time, were afraid of their sexuality, and I, you know, terrified that they couldn't have a, a, a happy life. And here comes this kid, this young guy, who says, "Oh God, I, I love myself. You know, I love being gay." And they think, "Really." He, a gay person loves, they used to say, you know, show me a happy homosexual and I'll show you a gay corpse. And, you know, because you're only happy when you're dead. Right. That, oh, oh my goodness, no, 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 no. And the same is true on the transgender, you know. There's so much joy in the lives of people who have transitioned. Now, you know, if there were problems for the person before they transitioned, then the problems are still going to be there, you know, after they transition, yeah. you know, wherever you go, there you are, but at least they're in the package, you know, they're presenting themselves in a way that feels consistent with where they're with, at, yeah, with their, with their divine nature. And I do wonder about these people that are very much making it their life, their career to limit what a good human is and define what a good being is. I really wonder in terms of, you know, that saying, don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. Just like, what is it to these people? Like, how is one person that lives, not even probably on your same street, you're probably not gonna see this person what does it mean to your everyday life? Like mm -hmm. their happiness isn't going to impact your everyday life. So why are you like, where is the fear? I, th I think the fear is of insignificance. It's the fear is that my life has no meaning. And, uh, and and I think part of it is that I don't love myself. I think it comes down to, I don't love myself and I don't love where I am right now. So I'm just gonna make, all make of this, it like have this massive smoke and mirrors thing going on. Um, but yeah, and I think, you know, I had the same question with the abortion thing, like these people making these laws and these sweeping decisions for other humans, it's just like, where are you? Like, what, what is going on in your life 
that you think this is what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty sure that everybody that may voted for that abortion law, pretty sure they know somebody in their family who's had an abortion that is very hush, hush, hush. Yes. I'm pretty sure all of these people that are so afraid of, you know, trans people right now, pretty sure there's a family member that is just oozing to come out that you love very, very much. And maybe you have some suspicions, but that's different because that's your family. Yeah, you know, Bill Staten, who you love, uh, you know, former guest and, and a lifelong friend, uh, he tells the true story of somebody coming to him saying, I need help arranging for an abortion for my 14 year old daughter. And he said, OK, you now we can do that. Uh, he said, well, you need to know this is really hard for me. Um, I'm head of the local right to life committee. And, you know, my life has been about opposing abortion, but I'm not going to ruin my daughter's life with a baby at 14. So, you know, his daughter gets a break. She gets a break, but nobody else does. Nobody else. And because I, abortion is murder in his mind. Yeah. And I think it's when we talk about that responsibility of love and that slippery slope down, it is the contradiction. <laughs> it's that blatant contradiction where, so it's okay for you, but not for them. Mm -hmm. And I think we're in a phase of humanity, of civilization, where that contradiction is just everywhere you turn. <laughs> you can't escape it. And it's exhausting. <laughs> it is. And that, you know, so I think that's going back, all the way back. Uh, that's why saying um, I'm just here, it, you know, helps. Because you can spend the day fuming about that man whose daughter had an abortion and he was head of the right to let you could spend the whole day fuming about that. But, and you're not available then to you're the not Holy Spirit. Yeah. You're not available. But now you're being a contradiction. Yeah. So just, you know, I'm just here right now. Smell, you know, I yeah. can smell the rutabaga on the stove. Oh, I bet your house smells delicious. It does every day I'm cooking, you know, and, and well, sometimes the checkout person says, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you they doing? Don't know, yeah. <laughs> they don't know the veg. Well, they don't know what the vegetable is. It looks like a, a cheese ball covered with you know, wax, but it's rutabaga. And I grew up in an Irish household that served root vegetables on Thanksgiving. So today this the house smells of, of rutabaga, but also tonight's dinner of eggplant parmesan. Oh so. my goodness. How lovely. How lovely. Uh, I, <clears throat> I wanted to share that um, we're in big energy, which we spoke about with the eclipse. And this energy that we're in started on last Thursday, which was the 11 11 portal. And um, I receive guidance from my teachers that are sometimes non physical. And one of the things that they were very clear with me, because I can very easily get more comfortable in trying to understand the universe and how the universe came to be and what metaphysics is and quantum physics. And they're very clear now about teaching me like, okay, great, but all this is taking you away from actually living. Yeah. And what is yeah. it trying to do? And so they shared with me these words. It matters only that I am showing up to be me wholly, completely regardless of the outside circumstances or how hard it is. Say it, so say it again. It matters only that I'm only. only that I'm showing up to be me wholly and completely, regardless of the outside circumstances or how hard it is. That's great. And, and Haley, you remember that I said a few, a few conversations ago, then in the middle of the night, I heard, stop thinking about this. You've got it. You know as much as you're going to know. I'll, I'll let you know more later. St be happy. Be and joyful. I, you know, we have a lot going on out there. And I think for some of us, you know, we feel like we're on that edge. Like, where do we go now? Where is this taking us now? And I've been sitting on that edge. And part of me is like, let's just jump. 
let's just go. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter what's on the other side of the ledge, just go. And it has been, you know, the message has been very consistent. Why are you looking at the ledge? Look what's in front of you right now. Are you enjoying what's in front of you right now before you mm -hmm. try and leap into something new? Mm -hmm. And it's so humbling because I'm like, true, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, yeah. It's, and I, yeah. it's wonderful that you have like this Thanksgiving time, which is a tradition in your house. And to have the smells and the colors that are so vivid and so present with you right now. Yeah, because clearly, you know, as I cook the, the uh, rutabaga, my mom and dad and my grandparents come into my mind. <laughs> you know, generations of tradition. tradition of cooking that rutabaga <laughs> and, uh, you know, a sage dressing for the turkey. And those are smells. Wow. You know, I've been sleepwalking, Haley, through all of this because of my grieving over my sister's death. It's hard when grief has a grip on you to breathe as you're decorating the Christmas tree and you know the house and preparing for the big meal. You know, in the past I would get, I would be excited, but it's, uh, it's been work, but I keep doing it. And each day it gets easier. Uh, each day I'm, I am less, uh, I'm less depressed and uh, more open to happy memories. And everybody who loses somebody they love can identify with what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And I think there's a level of acceptance that life has changed. Uh -huh. I don't know how it's changed. No, I really well, don't. It's changed because your sister's no longer in the physical. That's a huge change. Yeah, you're too, way too young to remember the name John Bradshaw, but he was a therapist who had a, a program on public television. And he uh, showed it a mobile, you know, where every piece is balanced. And he said, you know, when somebody dies, you know, and he took a piece off the mobile, everything was out of balance. Mm -hmm. Bang, 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 up and down, up and down. And uh, it'll find a balance eventually, but it won't be the same balance. It's not going to be the same balance. You know, no, that's, not... that acceptance that there is a, you know, it's almost like night and day. There was, you know, in your case, there was when Kathy was here and now Kathy isn't here. Mm -hmm. in the physical. And it's a big, it's a big change. And I think we, we we can never underestimate the way to change no and the chaos that comes with change and uh and acknowledging that uh it's okay to accept change you're not betraying the person who died right which is By, really interesting yeah I wanted to, that's what one of, I wanted the things to, I wanted to talk about today, if you're okay with it, um, uh, yeah, yeah. is we've spoken many times about how we view death. And I wanted to ask you in your different definition of death, how have you, how has that helped you or has it been rather neutral in this experience with your sister, Kathy? That's a great question because I was thinking about it as I was making the bed this morning. When I, when people are uh, suffering through the experience of the loss or the impending loss of a loved one, I share with them the, the metaphor uh, of the wave that has an identity that hits the beach, loses its identity, but seeps through the sand back to its source. Right. Is that your own? No, it's somebody oh. else. Um, I don't know who's. I love it though. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, but that wasn't enough for me this morning. You know, I wanted to know where my sister was. I wanted to know: is all of my belief poppycock, 
is she dead and that's it and that's it you know or is there more and uh, if there's more what is it and where is she and you know you can't help but question when it's about you mm -hmm. yeah right and it, you know that so, responsibility of love no <laughs> i so i i i like and embrace the 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 uh, wave seeping through the sand and returning to its source in terms of thinking of my sister that her goodness her kindness her love of fun 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 uh was absorbed into back into its source from which it came and the source was brighter because of its absorption of her it was excited about this new energy coming Isn't in. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. But where does that leave you on Earth? On Earth? Yeah. Well, it, it leaves me grateful. It, it leaves me humble uh, that I don't have the answer. And nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody does. Uh, but my believing, uh, you know, the wave breaking in the sand and seeping back into the ocean, th that doesn't impact my life, uh, whether or not there's an afterlife, because being good feels so good to me, you know, that I'd be good no matter what. You know? right. I, I love people. I love talking to people. I love you know, making people laugh, whether or not I'm abiding by a, a tenet of Jesus or Buddha, it doesn't matter to me. What matters is I love, I love spreading love. So the rest of my life, I'm going to continue. Uh, and I, but with, and with gratitude that I had these people in my life who made it possible for me to write the book I wrote made so many people happy that they were gay you know it's all part of it i'm blessed are you i'm so blessed every every bit of me and you know we keep changing everybody we you know you and i are different people because we met each other mm -hmm. you know Haley evans is now part of my identity it's part of how i see the world it's it's melded into my soul right uh, and the more, the more in connection we are, the deeper that goes, right? Uh, so that after I, you and I say goodbye, when we take off, you know, the people that you meet today are meeting Brian. Too. They're absolutely, they're meeting a different me because I spoke to you. That's right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a different guy, even though I'm just sitting here with the smells and the touch in my five senses, my DNA is different. Mm -hmm. Because of this time. Do you ask for more blessings or do you kind of say, I'm good, I don't need any more blessings? You mean in terms of people coming into my life? Overall, you know, whether it's people, like, you know, if you're at Thanksgiving and you're giving thanks and you're saying thank you for my blessings, do you say thank you from a place of, and I'm good, you don't need to bless me anymore? Or are you saying thank you for my blessings? May I have more, please? Um, I, I, I'm, my personality is thank you. This is great. You know, I don't need anything more. I know there's going to be more, but I'm not in need. I, you know, I'm not hungry for anything more than more awareness and is that and, is that part more, of being present do you think yes uh, yes because uh i'm present to my life as it is it is what it is and i'm present to it you know i can sit there and think what 
wonder what my life would have been like if I had married somebody else <laughs> or, or if I had become, if I hadn't come out or if I had become a, a, an attorney or a politician or what would my life be like? And you can think that um, it, it, it could be a fun distraction for a moment, but you come back to, hey, this is it. And this is really good. This you know? is really good. Yeah. This is really good. I it's, have moments uh, where I, I mean, I'm sure this is very similar to many people that have sort of changed lives. And I have moments where I'm like, oh, it felt so much easier back then, or I don't feel like I had these worries. And then yeah. like a few moments later, I'm like, yeah, but I have far less worries now altogether. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, good. if you really, if you're going to go there, you know, what if, what if, then follow it through. Follow it through. And yeah, you can say, okay, if I was back on Wall Street, I would get a steady check. I could afford whatever I wanted, right? Okay, so follow that through now. How are you spending your social time? Yeah. Who are you, who are you spending it with? How much are you drinking? How happy are you? How much are you sleeping? How well are you sleeping? Right. How kind are you being? <laughs> How kind are you being? Are people, do people like you? So true. Uh, follow through and then you'll come to. You'll come oh back goodness. to, oh, oh my goodness. And I think it's I'm, the same when we're looking forward to and trying to make, get an idea of what the future looks like. Yeah, we can always think it's going to be worst case scenario and I need to prepare for the worst case scenario, but we've got to follow that through and also be present for the best case scenario too. Yeah, and where are you when you're where are you when you're worried about the future? You're not here. Not in the future. You're not present. You're sitting in the future without. <laughs> and there is no future. So you're there sitting, you're you're floating around in, in, in and not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same thing if you go to the past, you know. It's a the things yeah, we yeah. do to waste our time. Well, we don't, you know, we're not aware that we're wasting it. No. That's the you know, and that's why we need teachers. You know, we need we 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 need access to people who are going to share these things with us at hopefully an earlier age, right? Not willing. So right. I mean, I try. I really try to mentor my nephews and nieces and their kids. You know, be in the moment look at what you have, mm -hmm. you know, I know you're thinking about, you know, the call you have in an hour, but right now, look around, look and around what do you feel? Present. What do you feel? Gratitude? I would hope so. Yeah. And they'll say, Uncle Brian, you know, I know I'm supposed to be present and that's helped me a lot. So I, you know, I, Haley, we just have to keep getting the word out. Uh, well, and it's happened more yeah it, more and more people are saying it and doing it you know, which is and great I think you know having that responsibility of being a teacher and taking it with the honor and pride that it is mm -hmm. is really like I said the only thing that matters is showing up for yourself wholly and completely without yep. compromise no matter how hard it is so that other people can be like man you're always like happy <laughs> Well, you're at least at and least always, you're always aware. kind, and yeah. you're always looking for like the best in people. How do you do it? Yeah, and those are my favorite kind of conversations. Where, and I, you know, again, part of that, you know, responsibility that comes with it has been accepting that I don't need to explain and be like, oh my god, let me tell you about the journey it took to get here. It's right. not just of a thank you. This is what I do. And but and but we can also give them a framework such yeah. as, you know, I truly believe that I'm part of a family and every member of my family needs love mm -hmm. just as I do. So I'm kind to people because they're my brothers and sisters. Yeah. They're me. Uh, and, and that just saying that can change the paradigm that the person asking you the question lives in they can leave thinking huh the people on this bus or on this 
train are my brothers and sisters. I may not like some of their behavior, but why wouldn't I give my grandma the seat when I see her standing there, you know, old and needing support? Of course, please sit. And that's what's doing, you know, that makes you feel good. So you do more. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like get addicted to doing good. It's because it feels good. Why does it feel good? Because it's right, but why is it it's right? Because you're truly embodying the Holy Spirit, then you're truly being you. And and being you means participating in, in the evolution of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. I'm helping it move forward as, as opposed to digging my heels and yeah. saying no. It's a fun life. There are it, moments it where it's, you know, deeply disturbing, um, mm -hmm. but it is, it is a very sweet, beautiful life. And I give great thanks for the vibrance of it. It's a wonderful time to be alive. It is. It was all the stuff. With all the stuff but, going on. It's. But previous generations have had, you know, all kinds of stuff to deal with too and lack of resources to deal with them so and the people who live after us you know 10 generations from now yeah they're going to face all kinds of hardships too but if if they know the message of i'm just here sit be present you'll get you'll, you'll, the see, you'll find in it what you need yeah it's wonderful. And I'm so grateful for the time and space to be able to be present. Yes. Yes, because, you know, you have eight kids and you work in a coal mine and you get home late and you have to go to sleep right away. Where, you know, where? where's your moment? How do you, how are you present? And well, how do you find teachers then, you know? Yes, I think they're still there. There they're are still angels. still there, but I, you know, the yeah. time to be able to go searching for a teacher and to get the message and then embody it, because you and I can say that, well, if you're a coal miner, you can find the joy in digging your coal, but there still has to be that time and space to be able to be open and receive that message, that teacher. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's, you know, I, I don't underestimate that in the lives that we have today. And I think this is, you know, there's never been a moment where somebody's had a busier life than the previous generation. It's all busy. It's all relative. Um, but it is, I do give thanks that whatever it means that I've had the time and space to listen and to be taught and also to teach. That's where, you know, when I asked you, what is the responsibility of self-love? I believe it is to teach, to share. Mm -hmm. Even I don't mean that one has to quit their job and become no. you know, a life coach. Oh my God, there are so many life coaches out there. Is there are as many life coaches in the gay community as there are real estate agents. I think <laughs> everyone's like, you don't have to stop your job. You don't, you be you wherever you are you and let people see. Yep. And I think it's you your know, best there, you. There are people that can find enormous joy in their corporate jobs. There's some people that are just made for that. And they should be validated in that. And we should be able to be like, yay, you're happy. Go for it. Yes. Enjoy just it. As we're saying to the person that is quitting to be an entrepreneur or quitting to be a life coach or a positive whatever it is. And there's and I'm glad for the life coaches. I just want I, them to make a, make a living. You know, that's that's the only problem. We have so many. <laughs> I think that's you know an interesting leap. And having done a very similar leap, you know, and now being in a position where I can teach about that leap, um, it's an interesting leap. And I think it's you know even more important to know yourself before you leave or know yourself better than you think you do before you leave be conscious be of conscious. who you are yeah who you are 
and what did it, what is it that you think is going to make you happy? Yeah. Will the movie make you, will the movie make you happy? <laughs> or, are you, or are you happy without the movie? Yeah. Well, I think that's a wonderful ending today because we're a minute away from being out of time. I okay. wish you a very joyful and loving Thanksgiving. And I will be one of those souls in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll try and stay you're, away. <laughs> yes. No, you're, you're with me and you'll yeah, be at the table you. with me. I wish that you were there in person, but Sending love to you and Ray and Lincoln and your lovely, beautiful house. May it be filled with love, as always. As always. Love, love you. Love to you. Bye. Bye-bye.